our films are not All right, I am here with an influential filmmaker, a filmmaker who made a film that was one of the most influential films, I would argue, of the last decade, The Kashmir Files. He's back now with another movie that promises to be just as influential called The Vaccine War. And I'm very happy to be welcoming back to the show, Vivek Agnihotri. Vivek, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Always a delight to be uh, talking to you. And I appreciate the the time. I know the tour has been, I can imagine it's been hectic. I wanted to ask you about the tour actually, because you know, the last film promotional tour that you did for the Kashmir Files, I can imagine that that tour was probably, you know, extremely emotional. I mean, we saw the videos, we saw the public reaction. I can imagine a very emotional tour. How has this tour been different, if at all? It's very, very different in approach, style, everything. See, the, the whole thing started because we don't have the kind of marketing uh, muscle or the budgets uh, which is required, you know. Uh, so mm. we said the best thing is take the film to people. Okay, let people see it. And it gives us time also to tweak film here and there and correct it. Like just a couple of days ago, I made a little two, three uh, tweakings in the final film. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do it. I start with a longer film and slowly I cut, 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 and I crystallize it to a... Oh, wow. Is that, do you, is that standard in the industry or is that something that you do? No, 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 nobody, nobody, nobody. I don't think anybody in this world Achha. would do that. Yeah. See, people generally show it to their friends inside the studio. Okay, and I don't think in the history of cinema, anybody would take their film, any director worth his salt would take a film three months or four months in advance and show it to cross-section of target <laughs> audience, cross-section of people. Uh, for yeah. example, like in Houston, we had lots of scientists and doctors. In Dallas, we had more business people. In San Francisco, IT people, young lot, you know, different. Uh, LA was more uh, little snooty, different kind of people. So in every city, <laughs> Chicago was more this uh, nationalistic, patriotic diaspora because Chicago is also hub of Pakistani uh, uh, yeah. narrative machine, you know. New York was again senators, congressmen, white people, cross-section of different ethnic community. So in every city, we are showing it to house full of 300 people plus uh, to cross-section of target audiences, you know. So that gives me a chance to actually it becomes a barometer and it makes me understand uh, where it is working, where it's not working. And also our films are not made out of compulsion to make money at box office. Our films are made for a purpose. Mm. We have a mission. We have a reason why we are making it. So if we are making it for the people and people are not connecting with it, then what's the point of making it? So, yeah. so, but it's been a very hectic tour this time because if we are, time is compressed. Last time mm. during Kashmir Files, uh, since the COVID was on, so we were going a little slow, but this time we are running day and night, you know. We finished uh, the screening next morning, we fly. Like today, wow. we just landed from Bangalore. I Sometimes we even forget which city we are in. <laughs> Do you know which city you're in today? Yeah, now I know it's Hyderabad. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> After the Kashmir Files, there was so much, you know, anticipation. Okay, what is Vivek going to do next? You know, because Kashmir Files was so impactful. It makes su it made such an impact in India, societally, politically, culturally. It made such an impact. After that, when you announced the vaccine war, I wanted to know what was, what was the inspiration behind, you know, making a movie uh, about the Indian vaccination program. See what happened. We started working on this subject, researching it before the Kashmir Files uh, released. 
so wow. yeah so i was very fascinated with the fact that on in march 2020 every single person on this planet was talk, thinking about life and death and mostly about death you know and mm. then after 9 months suddenly there was a vaccine and then people forgot about it and they were on revenge shopping revenge holidaying and <laughs> you know life became normal and people started doing mm. things more than they would do earlier so i said it's a great superhero movie when the whole world was saying that india will fail in this uh, attempt and lot of people in india were trying to sabotage the vaccine project uh, which we can discuss later because that's a very uh, mm. a different issue altogether but anyway to summarize it so i said who are these wonderful superheroes and that's how i started everybody thought that it's only bharat biotech or serum but then we realized they are basically mm. mass producers and distributors and marketers but the candidate and the formula was made inside bsl4 lab so that's when we started talking to icmr uh, scientists and uh, national institute of virology scientists people who uh, initiated and made the vaccine and people who were behind the vaccination drive of india but my idea was to make it later on because i never thought that kashmir files would ever become such a big hit so i thought let the research mm -hmm. go on and let's keep it as a probable one of the probable uh, subjects after the delhi files in case uh, this works out as a good uh, script but then kashmir mm -hmm. files became such a huge box office wise very hit and it also got a lot of conversation around it and so uh, what i want to tell you very honestly is that anybody in his right senses would have made kashmir files part 2 but then pallavi and i mm. took a very deliberate decision we said expectations are so high people want us to repeat the same thing and then what's the point what's the difference i mean we we say we are disrupting the typical bollywood kind of uh, filmmaking and we are independent filmmakers mm. and we definitely have a mission in our mind then what's the point of making that so we made a smaller film kashmir files was okay. if it was uh, 15 crores we made a 12 and a half crore films and we struggled again you know it's a lot of struggle when you make small films so we went back and consciously decided to make a smaller film but a more impactful film we said we cannot keep bringing all these uh, uh, sad stories to people it's time to bring in a happy inspiring and story full of uh, pride it's mm. another thing that people cry because film is so emotional but at the end of it you feel so good about yourself and about uh, the uh, people around you because see ultimately what else human beings want they all they want is that i can survive i can live mm. the real success is that you are surviving <laughs> anthropologically right. speaking and second thing is you are happy and you are proud of what you are doing you you know your worth so all these uh, emotions the film is creating it was a very difficult film more difficult than kashmir files and i am wow. happy that it is connecting more strongly than kashmir files with people in in what way if i may ask did you find it more difficult than kashmir files because i would imagine that you know making a film even getting a film like kashmir files made in a country like india with the political atmosphere that used to exist was a miracle in itself and so you're saying that this was even more difficult to make than kashmir files see kashmir files was painful but technically or uh, script wise it's, it wasn't as difficult because mm. there was a inherent emotion in it pain okay suffering see the jargon of kashmir files is everyday conversation death loss attack religion terrorism so people have ideas about these when i say terrorism you have certain image which comes to your mind but here if i if i if i say a virus you don't know how it looks like if i say virology mm. we did a we did a research Yeah, Sham. This is very interesting. When we started the film, we did uh, we collaborated with Indian Institute of Management, and we asked okay. them to do research on the awareness levels of uh, people, what they think. So, as we assume, most of the people think Bharat Biotech is the only company, or Serum is the only company that made the vaccine. Nobody knows that there is something called National Institute of Virology and a BSL4 lab inside which you do all these kind of things. You know, more than ninety percent of the people had no idea. that the virus because of which everybody was thinking that they are going to die and the vaccine because of which everybody started living again all comes mm. un under the science of virology mm. so people don't even know about virology forget about every anything right. else i don't know how they pronounce it in america virology or what but uh, the scientists i work with call it virology sure so the science of virology nobody knew 
okay so for us to understand then make it very very simple then the whole hmm. subject is so cut and dry you know there is no drama no emotion no thrill because it's a it's a, it's a vacuumed lab in which you are wearing these space hmm. uh, space uh, suit kind of things and heavy heavy scientific jargon as well right a lot of the scientific terms most people probably won't understand cinematically the biggest problem is you don't see the villain your villain is invisible okay your heroes are all covered up in masks and everything they don't move about mm. they don't go out you know they are locked in one place most 60% of the film people are acting with the mask and the pp kits and all those kind of things you can't even see faces okay there is nothing mm. to talk except for okay i did this test and i have done this experiment i have done uh, a primate test and very technical uh, jargon so that's that's why it was very difficult another biggest challenge was that i didn't want to go anywhere close to covid we had decided this is not a covid film it's not a film about the suffering of covid this film is about mm-hmm. achievers super achievers super heroes it's a story of a uh, victory you know when the whole world was saying india can't do it okay there were bunch mm. of people who said no we must do it and eventually they did it and so india can't do it culture versus india can do it culture now it's again a very difficult thing to explain in cinema you know so mm. but uh, yeah and but we ended up doing it pretty successfully it seems like that no definitely and uh, you know people seem to be connecting with it already and uh, to be able to like you said make a film that is so full of you know technical jargon it, it is such a scientifically dense movie and to to create a sense of feeling among the audience i mean i, I can imagine that how that would be difficult because kashmir files already was such an emotionally charged topic that it will grab you you know it, it has a very good potential of grabbing you anywhere because it's such a strong topic what did you you know throughout your research because i can imagine the research process must have been pretty rigorous as well yeah throughout your research was there anything surprising that you found or was there anything that sort of was like oh wow what was that all about was there anything surprising every single thing every single oh, wow. thing first of all i didn't know that it's the science of virology even i didn't know uh. right that was surprising then every information which came about the origin of the virus that kept surprising us but then there were a lot of debate around that so i had few ideas you know at least but mm. then what india went through okay how we made this vaccine like for example nobody knows that our scientists were sent to war zone in iran uh-huh. yeah to to get 6000 uh shia muslims so 1200 shia muslims from kargil had gone there so like sunni muslims oh. go to makka so uh, hmm. shia people go to qom and they got stuck there and they hmm. had to be brought back so uh, the scientists played the role of soldiers to bring them back i mean this is a hmm. story which i think itself is worthy of a feature film uh, yeah. then then when we wanted monkeys without trying on monkeys you cannot make the vaccine there were no monkeys right. and how do you get monkeys so normally you can go to a temple in india or a tourist place or anywhere and you can catch monkeys but because of the lockdown there was no food no tourists so all the monkeys had went deep oh. into forest and when they had to get the monkeys so most of the monkey catchers are muslims but there were some ramzan rose or something was going on and they were not available so scientists had to go to the jungle and to get monkeys from there oh wow yeah so this itself again is a film by itself yeah <laughs> so lots and lots of things like that but what really really shocked me was i also used to be of the opinion that why india was struggling unnecessarily and experimenting with our own vaccine uh, is it just because of nationalism we are making it or what mm. just to prove a point that hey listen we are self reliant um why didn't we take pfizer or modern now why didn't we take any foreign vaccine it- a lot of politicians also made that point you know ke pfizer khareed lo pfizer khareed lo jaldi se you know yeah 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 especially especially uh, arvind kejriwal and all these uh, yes. the entire gang of these negative people uh but i was shocked and surprised that despite being so socio politically aware I had no clue that for last seventy years, all these pharma lobbies and the vaccine companies have been arm twisting and blackmailing Indian government, and uh, all the vaccines have been coming late, and we are selling interests of the nation just because uh, 
uh, we had a this we can't do it kind of a culture or kind of a kind of a mindset another thing which right. shocked me was that you can look at pakistan and china as enemy countries but what do you do if your own people somebody who's sitting next to you in an aircraft he's the enemy of the country how do you know or the very celebrated uh, journalist or a highly celebrated acclaimed uh, authors writers historians right. intellectuals they are working against the interest of the country just for few bucks or for their grudges or their political agenda that was very depressing and very very uh, actually that motivated me to make this film i wanted a on one hand without getting into a, a political narrative i wanted the audience to understand expose this entire toolkit lobby the gang and also make them feel proud and feel inspired that yes if you mm. want you can do it i want to stay on that topic for a second because i you know i i agree with you in the sense that i found it very disconcerting ke you know at a time where our scientists are working around the clock to develop these vaccines that were ultimately able to protect so many crores of indians why were these scientists being ridiculed why was the why was india being ridiculed ki are ye dekho vaccine bana rahe hain they're trying to make their own vaccine ha ha let's see how successful it'll be why you should have just got you know gone and bought pfizer why do you think there was the there was a coterie of people that didn't you know want india to develop the vaccine or or have a successful vaccination program or were basically carrying out a funeral of the vaccination program before the vaccination program and even started in earnest like is it just because ki acha we don't like the political party so we would rather see the country suffer or what do you think that is behind it what what kind of ideology is okay it? this is this is my understanding and i want to say it without beating around the bush i want to say it very very candidly okay this is my understanding okay and it's a perception it's an opinion mm. i don't have any uh, scientific theorem to prove it so i don't want somebody tomorrow saying oh vivek says without <laughs> this thing this is my personal understanding and i my understanding is pretty better than a lot of people now after working on this for 2 years when covid came okay a lot of people thought said aha now people are going to die india has no mm. we have no medical infrastructure so now this government is going to get cornered and this is the easiest way to defeat narendra modi okay because elections they couldn't do it earlier and right. that's how everything started this was the triggering point the whole thing started from here then other than pharma lobby vaccine lobby international lobbies and a whole lot of people got involved that's another thing but that's how it started they actually wanted india to fail then lots of research mm. agencies there was if you remember there was a report of johns hopkins with princeton university which predicted that about 20 40 crore people would die and after that everybody the major one very eminent journalist also interviewed this and it became like uh, talk of the town and there was lot of fear mongering and there was panic and insecurity uh but then um, all these you know the usual suspects got onto this bandwagon and they started shouting that everybody is going to die and india has no medical infrastructure and this government doesn't know how to yeah. protect its own citizens after some time it turned out to be a fake news then princeton and uh, johns hopkins they issued official communique communique saying that no we don't even know where it has come from we never made it maybe somebody uh, put our stamp on it nobody reported that everybody reported a fake uh, news but nobody reported when it was like uh, the clarification cla- when the clarification came our lockdown started on 22nd of march i think uh, 2020 mm. but the vaccine project started very confidentially and secretly in the month of february early february you know nobody mm. knows this <clears throat> and the entire process was hastened up you'll see the film i don't want to talk much you'll understand how it happened sure. um but then we ended up making our vaccine is the fastest indigenous vaccine and we uh, yeah. january 7th we started rolling out the vaccine but in the interim these people tried every kind of tool and technique they had in their hand to sabotage this they started writing articles okay fake articles eventually telangana court ordered the wire the wire is a website yeah. in india they ordered them to pull down all these 14 articles not one 14 articles 
We yep. said it's a substandard vaccine. It won't work. It will kill people. Why there was no second trial or third trial and all those things without telling people why there was there was a third trial. All it was a very smart move. India, India, Jugar, you know, but I know it. What they did see normally the process is phase one, then phase two, then phase three takes a lot of time. They said, but these are independent trials, so why not do them parallel one, two, three, like that? Okay, so they took advantage of these things and confused the uh, people, confused the audience and the general public and create fear. Right. Then they said, why are you testing on monkeys? Why are you doing this? <laughs> they kept questioning all the times. Then what happened? The vaccine became successful. India also started mm -hmm. sending vaccine to other uh, helpful needy countries where America refused to give it to anybody. Britain mm -hmm. refused to give to anybody, but India did. That gave India a lot of goodwill in the global market. And India started emerging as a strong player in this pharma, very closed yeah. door elite club of pharma lobbies. And uh, countries like U.S. started looking at India in a different light. Okay, I'm talking purely from medical and uh, this thing. India yeah. had no masks, no PPE kits, no ventilators. We became the largest exporter by the end of it uh, of, of masks. And so yeah. India worked very quickly. These people couldn't digest. They said, oh, this is going to make this government stronger. This is going to make Modi a yeah. much stronger person. Then second wave came. Nobody in this world could have controlled it. It came unexpectedly and that Delta variant was very fast moving, uh, this thing. Then they used that as an opportunity. Delhi government played a very dirty role. They uh, increased that requirement by four times so that people, are, people feel that there is no oxygen. That was wrong. Supreme Court audit report says that. Yeah. Lot of political parties in the name of philanthropy and public service started hoarding oxygen. Can you believe it? You remember yeah. there are a lot of people who are saying, if you need oxygen, we'll give it to you. I don't want to name yep. everybody can figure it out. It's so easy to know their names. So all this happened. Then they internationally tried to give India disrepute and discredit the vaccine by publishing those funeral pictures. That was yeah. very, very vulgar, I would say. Uh, I shouldn't be using that word, but what you call, want to call it funeral pornography or whatever you want to call it. That's that's exactly what it was, Vivek. It was it was death porn. That's death exactly porn, what yeah. it was. It was misery porn. It was death porn. That's what they were playing. Could you imagine, Vivek, any media house of any repute trying to do that in an American cemetery? They would get kicked out of the country. It would be a HIPAA violation, first of all. It would be illegal to do that. You can't go into a cemetery and film dead people. It's a violation of American law. So you can't do that. But socially, bhi, they would kick you out the next day. But in India, because it's a garib desh, developing country, to chalta hai. and it got support from massive sections of the Indian media. They're smart. These people are smart. You know, they're smarter than the right wing people. Let me tell you one thing. This I know. I've been on the left. I know that. They're far, because they're, they're no creativity. They understood right. that the fire, it's per se, is very scary thing. Okay. Mm. In India, you see a lot of fire here and there. The Western kid, he doesn't see fire yes. on day-to-day -day basis. For him, it's a very, and he's not used to Indian customs. They thought, what's happening? Hundreds of people are burning. They couldn't fathom what was happening. They almost thought that the government was trying to hide the evidence because they're burning the bodies, burning the bodies. Burning the bodies, yeah. they're burning the bodies. And they, why, Acha, tell me something, Only did in only Hindus die? <laughs> why didn't they show the graves? You know? They didn't go to a Christian cemetery or a Muslim cemetery. No graves, no mass graves. There were mass graves, nobody reported them. Then they started selling these pictures. I think that hurt me a lot. Okay, fine, you show it, it's fine, but... So, would it be wrong to assume that these people are mass murderers, in a way? Mm. Emotional murderers, now we call it emotional truth after Hassan uh, Minaj's thing. So, they created... <laughs> so, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I read one of this lady journalist yesterday, she was talking about emotional truth and how bad it is and mm. how wrong and unethic unethical it is. But she was the one who was reporting all these funerals, sitting over there, putting a laptop on a bucket as if, you know, mm -hmm. creating drama around it. She was creating emotional truth. Right? Yeah. And now they have a problem with emotional truth of Hassan Minaj. There is no difference between these two people. They are the same animal. No. They are the same animal. Yeah. Especially what what really did get to me was obviously this part, what you're talking about, the sort of 
you know, the death bond. The second part was also as the vaccination program was rolling out, there was immediately, like you said, dozens of articles, dozens of media people immediately came out and started casting doubts on the vaccine. It doesn't work. doesn't work. Matlo. You know, they, they started telling people, Matlo vaccine. Don't take the vaccines because it doesn't work. It'll give you a heart attack and it'll kill you. Like imagine that, you know, गरीब लोगों को यार काम पे जाना है गवर्नमेंट अब लॉकडाउन में बेचारे काम पे भी नहीं जा सकते वैक्सीन ले कम से कम काम पे तो लगे लेकिन नहीं आप घर में बैठो घर पे घर के अपने लोगों को खाना पिलाना मत करो ठीक है स्टे अनएम्प्लॉयड गो हंग्री वाल द जर्नलिस्ट दर सिटिंग इन एसी बेडरूम जो टेल यू वैक्सीन मतलब मर जाओगे डू नो इन वन विलेज इन वन विलेज बाराबंकी व्हिच इज नियर लखनऊ ओके दे स्प्रेड सो मच दे सेड इफ यू टेक दिस वैक्सीन यू विल बिकम इंपोर्टेंट so when the vaccination people went there the volunteers went there to vaccinate them the entire village jumped into river the entire village jumped into river wow and in kerala so yeah. many people they said okay you'll get important so they climbed trees all these nariyal coconut trees you know <laughs> and there are reports it's a international report not indian report therefore these people can't even yeah. doubt it you know which says that indian uh, vaccination workers are the most attacked workers in the world they would throw okay uh, stones at them they'll beat them up you have seen those videos you know what was happening over oh, yeah. there and who created this okay when when people like say arvind kejriwal stand up and say that our vaccine is not safe and we should get in, imported vaccine somebody says i won't take bjp vaccine when people like shashi tharoor and rahul gandhi and all these people see whatever said and done but they have some constituency it's not that they have zero constituency right so together and then came all these so called intellectuals and thinkers and creative people bollywood people jumped into uh, this thing without knowing with no clue it's like the famous <laughs> ca thing bhai aap kyon keh rahe hain pfizer lena chahiye pata nahi sab keh rahe hain isliye yeah. main bhi keh raha hu you know that kind of thing <laughs> sab log aaye hue hain isliye main bhi aaya hua hu <laughs> so lots of starlets started saying that started creating not vaccine hesitancy of course it did but uh, it also people lost faith in our own vaccine then the mm. biggest biggest blow blow came when who did not and cdc did not approve our mm. vaccine they when america opened up mm. uh, on 4th of december or 4th of november i think first week of november they didn't give it to indian so thousands and thousands of indian students got stuck because of that yeah. at that time these scientists then they went on overdrive and they started writing on lancet and information they said info war has to be fought with info war so they yeah. went and they then they convinced published reports everywhere data efficacy data and all that and then finally we got it you know the emergency approval why do you think vivek that initially the the us government was hesitant on our vaccines because because these people spread a lot of uh, misinformation around it okay it was related to that you think yeah related to that and uh, I don't know if I I can say that I mean but I don't know uh, I don't I don't have any evidence to prove it but it could be also because it's a very strong lobby you know see there are two lobbies yeah. arms lobby and pharma lobby you can spend couple of lifetimes to understand their politics it's they are the quietest mafia of the world quietest I mean you never bother <laughs> about them everybody blames elon yeah. musk and silicon valley or george soros these are visible people people also attack gates yeah. bill gates but pharma lobby and arms lobby so quiet how it works and they are the real puppeteers lots of governments do what they want them to do you know and right. and which is why you see who has sent their uh, uh, the committee of experts to china twice not once twice and both the times their uh, uh, report remains inconclusive what does it say yeah. very interesting that both times it was inconclusive pata nahi you know maybe send a couple more scientists if you want to reach some conclusions but yeah it was it was very interesting but you know what what ultimately is so interesting about india's vaccination program is because everybody is like oh we such a big chaotic democracy you know and china can vaccinate people because it's an authoritarian country to zabardasti pakad pakad ke vaccinate kar sakte hain but in india despite being a noisy chaotic democracy and all of that it had one of the most successful vaccination programs on planet earth what do you credit that to like how was india despite all these obstacles that were thrown in its way was able to conduct such a successful vaccination program okay this is this is very funny i mean this is very funny and i was told officially that's why i can share this information with you uh 
you know, this is how it happened. They said, how are we going to do it? Then mm. one of the guys, the ICMR, they said, see, our bureaucracy is very slow. Okay, it's slow because there is no initiative. You just give them order mm. and they do it. You say, ki, bhai, jao, ye kaam kar ke aajo. they'll just go and exactly do what they're asked to do. They won't apply their brains. And this is a colonial <laughs> system. This is the British uh, hangover. Yeah. And this is the general complaint against Indian bureaucracy and the uh, government system. Mm. They said, let's take advantage of this. Let's use this entire force, give them a goal, say, today you have to go and get 5,000 people vaccinated. I mean, see, somebody who has, who's a thinker or somebody who has initiative or who's self-driven, motivated, he'll say, oh, I am yeah. pregnant. Why should I cross the river? You know? Yeah. But then all these nurses and all these volunteer ladies, they said, if I'm pregnant, so what? It's a government duty. I have to go. Mm. You know, if I have to climb the mountain, I have to climb the mountain. So they mm. just, without even caring about anything, whether they are going to die or they're going to live, they started executing it. What they realized that Indian bureaucracy is very good when it comes to, you give them an order, just do this. They don't care. They don't even question it. Mm. So this lethargic system was used to their advantage. You know, and wow. second second thing they did uh, great was they used technology very well. You know, I have a great story. So they started using drones, you know, for remote areas. So northeast there was there was a militant area and they started using drones. In one place, all these terrorists, they hijacked their drones. Okay. And but when they realized that it is vaccine, they said, oh, it's going to save us also. And they said, OK, we are going to help these people. So there are a lot of funny things. Sometimes terrorists in one region, they, they, they basically kidnapped all these people. But then they realized right. that it's for vaccination. Uh, so they said, first, give us vaccine, then we'll leave you. So oh all my these God. So things like that have happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Your previous movie was The Kashmir Files. Your next movie coming up is The Vaccine War. One of the arguments that I've seen, this has been made by journalists, this has been made by intellectuals, this has been made by senior figures within Bollywood as well, senior actors, that, you know, filmmakers now are moving the, making these jingoistic, hyper-nationalistic movies. And that is a very worrying trend. Why is it a worrying trend? Because as far as I understand, Vivek, the average Indian is extremely proud of being an Indian. And the average Indian really, really loves India. So it it makes complete sense that the average Indian would want to see movies that make them feel the same pride about their country that they already feel. So why is it a worrying trend that there are movies that are showcasing, you know, India's big achievements on the global scale? Why is that a worrying trend? What was Lagan? <laughs> okay. What was, exactly. uh, what was Congress fought an election on Mera Bharat Mahan? Mm. Okay. Uh, and as I understand, jingoism is like, like there is love and there is intense, passionate, obsessive love. That's what jingoism is. Okay. But mm. Kashmir files, there is no jingoism. It just shows what happened at that time. It's not that somebody has taken a flag and or taken a Hindu flag or an Indian flag and said, Are, I'm Bharat ke naam pe aisa karo, aisa to kahi nahi in this film, hmm. I didn't see Mithun Chakravarti go and take POK in the name of India. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that wasn't part of the movie. <laughs> nothing, nothing of that sort. In fact, these are the yeah. people who have been making jingoistic films. I know some actors who have been saying that they have been making uh, jingoistic films. Uh, and and jingoism is also a matter of it's a very subjective thing. What is jingoism to you? Uh, maybe a expression to someone else, you know. Uh, hmm. I don't, I seriously don't know where is the line between jingoism and is there anything called sophisticated pat uh, patriotism or I don't right. know, or, or very colonial style, um, elitist, uh, pat these are stupid labels. Isn't patriotism sort of by definition, you know, felt very passionately? Yeah. That's the whole point of patriotism, right? Yeah, it's okay. The mother, mother has a right to say my child is beautiful or my child is the most beautiful child in the world. I mean, it's her choice. Uh, you know, mm. and it's not that it's a new trend. Gadar came 20 years ago. Nobody said it's a jingoistic yeah. movie. Now they started jingoism. See, whatever they say, it's all in the context of Narendra Modi. You take out Narendra Modi from the picture, everything becomes okay. They think that when they will uh, use these kind of labels, 
okay they can discredit or disrepute the other person that's what they are thinking mm. but uh, i don't care my film it's nowhere we have shown indian flag or we have sent bharat mata ki jai and all those kind of we just shown mm. ordinary people uh, ma- making the vaccine but when you come out of the theater you feel so great about this country you know mm. you feel so great about india now you can call it anything but this time nobody can even call it jingoistic because it doesn't even talk right. about patriotism my my point would be vivek that you know is it wrong though like i would imagine that those scientists who developed you know worked overnight worked months and weeks without any sleep to make this vaccine i'm sure they did it out of a sense of patriotic duty as well ye mere desh ka sawal hai desh ke liye kar rahe hai i think i think yeah see but i think scientists didn't think uh i think desh came second first was humanity hmm okay i mean they told me many times okay they said mm. we have to save lives that was the first thought we have to save lives of course indian right. lives obviously i mean their scope of work was only right. uh, limited to india so obviously indian lives and indians benefited but i think it was little more than that india mm. actually gifted vaccines to 101 countries it's no joke i mean there is no parallel to this whether you call it jingoism or whatever 100 years later nobody is going to call it jingoism you know yeah. things will look different a few years later or a decade later okay what would mm. have been uh, a very very orthodox or very cruel in 1945 during world war 2 today looks like an act of humanity you know so yeah. uh, i i think we did a great job and we should not bother about all these uh, india can't do it gang we should just celebrate yeah. india can do it mindset that's what i'm trying to do with this film no it's wonderful and you know i want to switch gears a little bit and talk to you about you know working with actors like nana patekar anupam kher pallavi joshi these are all like you know veteran actors they they've been in so many movies so many tv shows how is it working with veteran actors like that you know how much direction do you give the actors ki aise karo aise karo and how much freedom do you give them or license do you give them to interpret the role and the dialogues in their own way like how do you find that balance see when i was doing these commercial films these stars you know they are not actors number one so you have to spoon feed them and you have to actually hold their finger and uh, uh show them where the water is still they can't do it you know and hmm. but then i decided in my 2.0 then i decided that i have to work with brilliant actors so when you hmm. work with intelligent see there are two kinds of actors they are good actors and they are intelligent actors you know so when you work with intelligent actors they immediately understand the soul and they take the material which is on the script they take the character and give it life mm. you know so they are not just speaking dialogues is the character which is speaking dialogues and they live with it nana pallavi uh, anupam these are the names you know but there are other actors in this film you'll be surprised oh, yeah. so in this film i had only two challenges i didn't have to tell them how to act okay because they immediately understand whether they have to do realistic acting i mean uh, nana instantly knew whether he has to be uday shetty or he has to be dr balram bhargav <laughs> right. so he surrendered himself so all these actors and intelligent actors have a great quality they instantly surrender without any ego mm. to the character but my challenge was a i had to ensure that the signs they talk about looks authentic when they talk and they have to at every single second they have to remember they are scientists mm. you know and the scientists working under crisis does not mean that they do panic normally in hindi films if there's a crisis they do, oh all those kind of things they do <laughs> no let's do it hurry up hurry up but the real people don't do like that when we have a yeah. crisis on our set as a director i don't say hey come on do this do this i work normally yeah. okay a surgeon doing an operation does it normally because surgeon yeah. is not dying he's an expert that's why he's there so mm. so i have to uh, maintain all those kind of things then little little nuances that with the mask how will you talk without the mask how will you talk so that's all i had to do and rest these people have done you know uh, we did a show the first show was we called all the scientists and by the mm. way if you don't know in this film everybody has a real name doc nana is playing dr balram bhargo who's dr balram bhargo in real life oh wow so, oh yeah 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 every scientist we are using the name perhaps for the first time something like this has happened so we called all the actors and the scientists and we made them sit together 
and they just couldn't believe it scientists when they saw the film they couldn't believe it was them or the actors and they started right. crying they were over overwhelmed and they cried in fact dr priya abraham uh, pallavi played her role she's a malayali and pallavi picked up an accent exactly like her and after the show got over she was crying and she said i can't believe because you showed what i never told you and which is so true about me you know so yeah no yeah, that's incredible what what is your you know what is your experience like like do you sometimes like you know you said you have certain experiences when you made commercial movies and now you're working with like you know different kinds of actors uh, intelligent actors you know who think very deeply about their roles and what they're doing what has the experience been like like do you just sit back sometimes and and just like get lost in the performance do you, does that ever happen to you when you see somebody reading a line or doing a scene and you're like goodness man this is this is fantastic oh well, yeah yeah see they they add value what i say is see they add value they surprise you they bring something which you don't know i mean you never visualized mm. and that's why i'm making these kind of films because i'm see i'm you have to understand i'm not a young boy 20 25 year old who's in off stars and say aha mom see i am in bollywood so i'm i'm not <laughs> i've crossed that stage now i am uh, more mature now you're I, 30 <laughs> now you're 30 no 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 longer a spring chicken <laughs> no no so they surprise me all the times and see like pallavi uh, the way she says bharat bharat ke scientist is so beautiful i mean it, it's not yeah. doesn't sound caricaturish also it's so well balanced nana when he says i am not telling you other scenes but whatever you've seen in trailer when he says hamari apni bharat ki vaccine bharat ki apni vaccine it makes you emotional it makes it chokes yeah. you out of happiness okay here is a guy who's who's going to uh, 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 save us so you want to believe in him so that way i think working my experience working with these great actors even mithun chakravarty nobody exploited him the way uh, you know he's a great actor see in both my films yes yeah in both my films tashkent files and this one he has brought such a new dimension to uh, mm. performance he's a school by himself so all these are yeah and one I, of the things i think people didn't realize about uh, sorry to cut you off there vivek but one of the things i think people didn't realize initially in his early career about mithunda is what a good comedic actor he is and comedy is not an easy thing to do oh, yes. you know most people will tell you comedy is not an easy thing to do but he's such a comedic good comedic actor also oh yeah 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 great comedian and yeah. when it comes to serious acting he's very good he has yeah. played uh, all kinds of serious bengali he's got three national awards not just like that mm. and if you look at agnipat agnipat was agnipat agnipat agni all of mitab bachchan movie yeah. you know vijay uh, dinana chauhan and all that iconic role and great dialogues and he was shot like huge guy amitabh bachchan yeah but to 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 steal the show uh, with a small role is no joke yeah so see i think i think is the is the surrender to the character is a such a difficult quality and it's also at the same time such a god like quality such a divine quality to yeah. be able to surrender yourself to the character daniel day lewis does that you know whole lot of actors do that you know that quality de niro has been doing it quite often so i am lucky to uh, be working with these actors you know for for a lot of aspiring filmmakers who want to make films about things that they're passionate about i would imagine that you're an inspiration to a lot of them because you chose uh, a a topic that a lot of people thought was you know kind of untouchable like oh kashmir ke bare mein film mat banao film banani hai to ek hi tarah ki banani hai you know mission kashmir banani hai and uh, we, we can't talk about what happened to the kashmiri hindus but it was a passion project for you you took it and despite all the obstacles you made the movie it was such an impactful movie and so for filmmakers you know that are getting started on their journey right now that have passion projects like that and may not have the resources what what kind of advice would you give those people see first thing i would say is uh, you should not have a fear of losing anything okay i have only two advice to begin you know everything else is people talk and but that is uh, more idealistic i would give two practical advice to people number one okay cut down your needs make your needs bare minimum bare 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 minimum that's why you see i have just few pieces last all 5 6 10 interviews you see in last 7 days you'll find me wearing only this and just to change the look i put a badge so it looks different <laughs> so do that have one pair of shoes couple of socks 
okay, few t three, four T-shirts, and uh, just if you don't go to party, you're not going to die. You have a much larger uh, mission uh, on your head. You can do something better. Mm. Um, don't smoke, don't drink. Okay, sleep less. So you have to. These are the things you have to do. I mean, uh, imagine if somebody is going for deep diving. Okay, he has to prepare. He has to do few things. If you are going, mm. going. If you want to scale Mount Everest, there are few things you have to do. You have no option. Okay, people who are mm. going to the moon. Okay, their their urine is being circulated as water. You know, I used to do uh, mountain climbing. You breathe differently. You walk differently. So you have to do things. So you have to look at yourself like that. That I am going on a mission. And these are the few things I have to do, and I exactly do that. Mm. Uh, I mm. practice that. It's not that I'm just saying it. So cut down your needs, number one. So when you cut down your needs, you don't have fear to uh, lose anything. And second thing is, don't get into this game of impressing others. The entire problem lies here: impressing others. Just go mm. on to express yourself. Okay. So when you tweet, tweet and get out. Don't. Care about what people are writing underneath. <laughs> that way lies madness. If I have to care about that, then uh, you know I won't wake up next morning. You know, so <laughs> just say what you want to say, but be sure about that. Yes, you are willing to lose everything for what you are saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was. We almost. We lost. It. See, film worked. We didn't know that. Five years. We wouldn't have put mm -hmm. in if we knew that film is going to work like this. We would have finished it in six months. So we put everything we had, and even now, whatever money we little money we got, we have put everything into making of this film. If this film doesn't work, mm. I am back to square one. I don't know. There will be darkness all around, and I'll have. I can't even think what I'm going to do if this doesn't work. You know. Mm. So you have to be prepared to struggle every single time. In Hindi, if I have to say, तो मैं रोज अपना कुआं खोदना पड़ेगा और रोज उसमें से पानी निकालना पड़ेगा. Right. I think that's very good advice. Yeah. Um, and before I let you go, I I've been doing this uh, rapid fire round with our guests before I let them go. Not Kejo style. So if you indulge me for ten more minutes, not uh, Kejo style. I'll, I'll, what's that? Not not Kejo style. Hopefully, hopefully uh, a little bit a little bit better, a little bit different at least. All right. So this is our rapid fire round. Uh, first question: Do you have a specific inspiration for the character of uh, Raima Sen? Ah, uh, yeah. You will figure it out once you see the film. You will know better than me. Yes. Okay. Um what was the funniest or most interesting thing that happened during the promotional tour of this movie so far? Not not I won't say a uh, funny thing but uh, strange things are happening to me, you know. Lot of people actually uh, coming to me and saying we are going to file FIR against this journalist, you know. And the, oh, they, wow. they, they are asking me to file uh, PILs calling them mass murderers. <laughs> Uh, which means people have been affected by this negative uh, reporting right what is the difference between promoting this you know your movies in the us versus you know the promotional tour in india oh there is there is lot of difference in india life is little easier in america it's very difficult the first thing you land in america oh, yeah. you become a porter so since we are flying <laughs> <laughs> flying every single day so so many bags we have to carry uh, all the times second mm. problem in america is that in the hotels is very difficult to get tea so morning tea becomes a big problem oh, in really? india it's, oh yeah generally they keep mm. coffee and if you are a tea drinker mm. then it's a big problem you know they keep green tea and right. mint tea or lemon tea or peppermint tea but not the real tea <laughs> so yeah. but that's that's not the thing but i think people are the same my stories are not mm. geography driven so they are human stories and people are the same uh, like in us we had so senators came congressmen came um, whole kind like new york uh, president of republican party of new york came uh, teachers came wow. scientists came uh, we get syrian people we get uh, jews we get sikhs we get all wow. kinds of people in america america we get mm. whole lot of ethnic communities and in india also but the emotion is the same if you see our reels which we are putting of audience reaction mm. whether it is dallas or chicago or uh, nagpur or indian sure of management or very sophisticated uh, los angeles reactions are exactly the same americans indians blacks whites muslims hindus jains is the same reaction so it's connecting mm. with people so which means it has a universal resonance mm. According to you, what is the silliest or stupidest political or cultural opinion or narrative held in India today? Um, that India could be by anyone. That India is an alliance. 
<laughs> they believe that they are an alliance when all of them are actually enemies of each other. So I find it very funny. I find it so funny. I don't understand how come they don't laugh at themselves because all of them right. are fighting each other in every state. You know, yeah. TMC wants to destroy Congress. Congress wants to destroy TMC. They are fighting Nitesh. Nitesh is fighting somebody else. Arvind Kejriwal is fighting Congress. I mean, this <laughs> bunch of jokers or what? I mean, and they say we are an yeah. alliance. And the name itself is so cringy, I can't tell you. <laughs> According to you, what is the biggest issue facing India today? I, if I say it, a lot of people will say that you have your old theme. But I think this entire... Uh, a uh, consolidation of Islamic communist uh, nexus. I think mm. that is working as a big danger because uh, from the east side, the red money is coming into India. Huge sums of money. That's why you see northeast is mm. troubled for quite some time now. And from mm. the west side, we have a lot of this uh, uh, green money is coming in. So this combination of red and green money, okay, um, I think it's creating and all they want is to create some kind of a mega conflict in India so that uh, and I think which is very, very dangerous and one has to be very, very careful. Mm. And they keep see in ordinary life, you see Hindu Muslims are not conflicting. It's but they want to pressurize and keep creating a, con, uh, a narrative uh, which can mm. If you blink, you can really lose it. So I think this inflow of green and red money is very, very dangerous thing for India. What gives you the most amount of hope for India? Um, I don't want to sound like uh, a political person, but I think the hope <laughs> is hope is coming from Indian women. I think if India is shining mm. today in every field, it is because of women. If you see the fastest growth has been, be it the finance sector, banking sector, uh, uh, aviation sector, service industry, media, mm. uh, education, law, all these young, if you, I was in high court a couple of times recently for some contempt of court case and all the young lawyers are women, girls, you know. So in every field, science, this film which I have made, okay, the vaccine was made, 70% of them were women. Wow. Yeah, bioscience and oh. biotechnology and bioscience, which is the most uh, uh, fastest growing uh, field after artificial intelligence in the world. All women everywhere. So I think Indian women, <laughs> because the the fruits of Beti Bachao, Beti Pada or whatever, educating uh, uh, hmm. the girl child is now uh, the fruits we are seeing, the results we are seeing now. Right. So since you're a filmmaker, let me ask you, what's your favorite genre of film? Um, human drama. Yeah? Yeah, now I'm at a stage in life where I like human emotions more than anything else. What filmmaker or makers have inspired you? Uh, olden times, I would say uh, Gurudat. In modern times, I would say Shekhar Kapoor. Oh, wow. Uh, what's your current favorite movie? Uh, I haven't seen uh, movies in last one and a half years, not many movies. But last movie which I really uh, liked uh, was Three Dears. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a great movie. Maybe I am also a frustrated photographer, that's why. <laughs> right. Do you have a guilty pleasure movie or TV show that you're slightly embarrassed to admit that you love? Ah, uh, Crime Patrol. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> no way. See, you know why? Because the, my, my, my mom swears by that show. So there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's so, so cringy because every case they solve on phone. Anything, <laughs> get the phone calls and they say, okay, the case solved. <laughs> and that's how I like it. But yeah. uh, the the best part of that show is you can start anywhere and you can end anywhere. It doesn't You can see it for 15 minutes, get out of it. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. What movie does everyone like, but you don't? I won't like to name them. There are a whole lot of movies, or especially all these <laughs> movies which are doing like thousand crore rupee business. Okay. Ah. So all these movies, I mean, if they are doing thousand crore rupee business, means every single person is liking them and loving them. Uh, so I hmm. feel very lonely. Maybe I am the only one who's not liking them. What will be the name of a movie that is made about your life? Mm. Disruptor. A good name. What real life character, current or historical, would you like to really see a movie or TV show made about? 
Actually, uh, I am making a movie on uh, the Delhi Files. I am making on a character mm -hmm. who fascinated me a lot. His name is Gopal okay. Patha. Gopal Patha. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, Tell us more about very him. Very underrated. Nobody talks about him much. If you have seen a film called Gandhi, have you seen mm -hmm. Gandhi? Richard Attenborough. Mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. that, in that, if you see a scene, Gandhi goes to uh, Bengal and he says, "Okay, surrender all your arms because there were a lot of riots after Direct Action Day." And Om Puri comes and he finally surrenders, which was fake, which was a British lie. Okay, it never happened mm. like that. This guy never surrendered, and he told Gandhi on his face that even if I used my nail, quote unquote, he said that, and it's on BBC, mm. it's recorded. He said, even if I used my nail to save my brothers and sisters. I won't surrender that to you. What fascinates me is that imagine the towering personality of Gandhi and Nehru's and Patels and Subhash Chand Bose and the British police and the British administration and everything. And Direct Action Day, you should Google. In fact, if you want, when you edit the show, you can put some pictures here. Mm -hmm. um, you take, you type Direct Action Day and see the pictures. There are only the roads are full of skeletons, okay, yep. and there are vultures sitting on the roofs, you know, uh, hounding over. It's Time Magazine or New York Times pictures. Yeah. In that scenario, when all the Hindu community was butchered and ten thousand people were killed overnight. At that time, to come out, a very shy, a very uh, uh, feeble guy, okay, mm. to go and unite Sikhs, Marwadis, Jains, all kinds of different ethnic communities together, and then to go and defend their own community to such an extent that ultimately uh, the enemy party had to surrender. I think mm. that is one. So when when people say that we fought, we we found our, uh, our freedom with non-violence. This is, I think, it's, it's, it's the biggest lie. And to expose this lie, I thought that I must uh, use this character uh, uh, very honestly. So in the Delhi Files, mm. I am going to show Gopal Patha perhaps for the first time to non-Bengali audience. Wow, that's 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 amazing. I'm very happy that that person is getting their you know moment in the sun. What is your favorite genre of music? And your current favorite song to listen to? I I like all kinds of music. I yeah. actually I is there any song you're listening to a lot? Right recently? now, for last for last one month, I am just listening to uh, Games of Thrones background score. Here, right oh, now, you wow. can check. Abhi, I'm a plane. Maybe you know why? <laughs> because that orchestration. I'm trying to figure out that how they arrived at such a uh, this kind of uh, uh, orchestration and arrangement and I'm just seeing right. and also because now vaccine war is over and I am on to the Delhi files and for me it is very important before I start any film to find the sound you know like for example the vaccine war before I started I found the sound of this uh, Srishti Se Pehle Sat Nahi Ta Sat Nahi Ta hmm. uh, I, then I bought rights of that so I am trying to find sound and somehow I am getting very fascinated with this and uh, something will come out of this. That's what I am listening to. And the second thing I am listening to is one ghazal called Mohabbat Karne Wale Kam Na Honge Teri Mehfil Me Lekin Ham Na Honge So uh, oh. this is... Who's it, who's it by? Uh, even I don't know. Lots of people uh, have sung okay. it. Farida Khanum has sung it. Then uh, Mehndi Hassan has also sung it. A whole lot of people have sung it. So Games mm. of Thrones and Mehndi Hassan wow. both play together. <laughs> It's a, it's a good music combo. Favorite book that you've read in the last year or so? Um, um, I mean, uh, it's it's funny, but the last book I've been reading or I just read is called Burn. Though it may sound it's about calories, but not really. It's not about fat and all that. <laughs> it's just basically about how your body uh, uh, burns calories and what happens. It's a science. So I'll tell you what, there is this guy called Manu Joseph. You know, he's a author, mm. he's a columnist. He wrote about mm -hmm. it. So I downloaded okay. the book recently uh, because I've been traveling in US. So uh, I downloaded and I said, let me see why Manu Joseph is talking about it. If Manu listens to this podcast, I'll send a link. He will mm. be fascinated. But then it's such a wonderful book. I mean, after four pages, five pages, I got into reading it. And now I'm last 10 or 20 pages are left. That's what I'm reading. Uh, and besides that, I've been um, uh, reading Vedanta a lot in the last one year or so, yeah. Since you're from Madhya Pradesh, they're you in a little bit of trouble in MP. 
uh, according to you what is mp's best town bhopal it's india's best town <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> Let's get you in trouble nationally then. <laughs> <laughs> But um, Bhopal is the most beautiful city in India, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been. I'd love, love to go to Bhopal because I keep hearing very nice things. I have a couple of friends in Delhi from Bhopal. A sleepy town with mm. beautiful lakes, dense forests, and very, very little traffic. Mm. Not too much of traffic, and it's little rocky and hills. So if it rains, the water flows down. Yeah, and very simple people. No thieves and no pickpockets or no stupid people. Yeah. What part of Madhya Pradesh has the best food, according to you? Indore. Yeah. Yeah, Indore street food is fascinating. It's amazing, out of this world. Yeah. What is your go-to food? If you had to choose one food that you can eat any time, what is it? Apple. Really. Oh yeah, because I travel a lot. See, I travel a lot, uh, and and now uh, so you get very bad food at the airports and everywhere. You know, very yeah. unhealthy food you get everywhere. So I yeah. just carry uh, two things uh, with me. I carry makhana, roasted makhana, and uh, uh, I I always carry one fruit, any any fruit for that. Except for banana, I eat lots of fruits. But then you can't carry a watermelon with you. So apple is easy. <laughs> just put it in your pocket or in your bag, and you can eat it anywhere, yeah, yeah. anytime. And looks cool if you are eating apple. A lot of people think you are a health freak, which I am not. <laughs> <laughs> and after Madhya Pradesh, according to you, which state has the best? Has the best food? I would say UP. Mm. You know, uh, uh, UP. I find. that you get all kinds of food if you want unhealthy yeah. fried food you get that if you want sattvic food you get it if you want religious spiritual kind of food you get that mm. uh um, if you want plain simple dal chawal so up has a lot of variety you know maybe because yeah. uh, and you get biryani also and you get good mutton also you get tunde ke kebabs also so it has a whole lot of range mm. i think it's because because uh there were a lot of influence in up all yeah. kinds of influence punjabi influence sikh influence Sindhi influence, so that's why I think UP has. Uh, whereas if you go to Karnataka, you get only certain kind of food. Yeah. yeah. Then also one one place, two two cities are out of this world when it comes to food: Bombay, Mumbai, yeah. sorry, and uh, Kolkata. Oh, acha. Kolkata, I haven't I haven't really experimented with food much. Street food, great street food, Chinese food, Indian Chinese food, Thai food, all kinds of food. Kolkata is really good. Yeah. Um. Last couple of questions. Uh, an interesting or funny fact about you that maybe a lot of people might not know um what people may not know is that i am a very very introvert person oh wow that's hard to tell yeah that's hard to tell it's very hard to tell but you may not know i can i every i mean i am always out for 15 days to one month without tv <laughs> phones friends anybody i am locked alone and when i am not performing for my job like i'm talking to yeah. you right now yeah. then i just hate people i don't want to see anybody <laughs> yeah i can relate to that i i i live in a very very small town in in the us and very purposefully i chose to live here because you know i like cities fine but after a while i kind of start feeling a little claustrophobic and here i feel like acha chalo jagah hai No, yeah, I even I'm not a. I don't. I don't like cities. I don't like big places. Yeah. But I have to live it. But I've learned to live. But I don't like cities. Yeah. Right. And final question: What can you tell us about the Delhi files? Uh, two things I can tell you. We are still. I'm. Uh, research is over, but I'm still writing it. Uh, sure. One sure. thing is for sure. I think uh, Indian in India the partition never stopped. Mm. Okay. Uh, the hangover of partition still goes on. If not true. why do we have kashmir why do we have unrest in bengal why do we unrest in kerala why do we why did we have gujarat why did we have babri why did we have shahin bag and we have a history of riots happening every week every month somewhere or the other uh, which means this mm. issue is not settled okay the issue for which partition took place never got settled yeah. यू नो दो भाइयों में झगड़ा हो गया बंटवारा हो गया बीच में दीवार तो खड़ी कर दी लेकिन वो दीवार में दोनों तरफ से गाली दे रहे हैं एक दूसरे को और पत्थर फेंक रहे हैं विच मीन द इशू नेवर गॉट सेटल सो दैट वॉल हैज नो मीनिंग द पार्टीशन हैज नो मीनिंग वॉट इज बिहाइंड दैट वाई इज इट हैपनिंग वॉट इज दैट माइंड सेट हुज डूइंग इट सो डेली फाइल्स बेसिकली इज अ जर्नी फ्रॉम द डायरेक्ट एक्शन डे नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स इन बंगाल आई आई रियलाइज वैन वी वर रिसर्चिंग दैट वैन वी थिंक ऑफ पार्टीशन वी थिंक ओनली ऑफ पंजाब 
because that is mm. in popular literature popular culture that is what is most visible you know but the mm. the foundation of partition is in bengal do mm. you know that bengal was divided partition first then again it was united yep. that was britishers did and that's how divide and rule thing started so direct action day where tens of thousands of people were killed then noakhali happened in bengal then after that mm. so many things happened from there the movie begins and hopefully will end at shaheen bagh uh, uh, the delhi riots uh, and in between whatever india has gone through or bharat has gone through you will see that mm. the unfortunate part is uh, sham that in india uh, this india bharat thing is a real debate it's not a fake debate okay yeah. india is cons- the uh, people who who as who identify themselves with india people who always say india 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 and there are people who mm. never use the word india and they are more bharati in their own mindset india has constantly in last 75 years tried to defeat bharat it's a loaded uh, sentence but when you'll see the film you'll understand what i'm trying to say so and it has mm. got nothing to do with this current debate about the name i am not in favor of mm. changing the name at all okay i'm not saying change the name but yes there is a clear cut divide people living in uh, right. south delhi or breech candy and uh, you know and people <laughs> living in gorakhpur or in uh, fulwara yeah. or in uh, amritsar or sorry in patiala are very different in their approach mm. and thinking and customs and traditions and style of living you know so and yeah. but the other people is uh, the people in breech candy are always trying to show around these people hey you don't know how it works you mm. know the same people who said that foreign vaccines are superior to indian vaccine <laughs> Yeah, there, so there was in my film there is a dialogue where Nana says, "Agar Bharat Biotech me Bharat nahi hota aur Indian Council of Medical Research me India nahi hota, to apka hamari vaccine bahut achhi lagti." That's a good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Well, um, I won't take too much more of your time, Vic, but I I do want to thank you for taking the time. I know you have a very busy schedule, so I do appreciate you taking the time and, and talking to me today. Hopefully, this is wasn't too much of a drag, and and you had a good time. No, it's always a delight to talk to you because you are a very different kind of a podcaster, and I really love the your vibes and everything. And keep doing great work. I laugh uh, a lot when I see some of your shows, especially the meme <laughs> section. Okay, and I I told you last time also. I wish sometime you'll invite me in that show so and make me a part of that party. Well, let's do it. Yeah, I'll I'll do it as soon as you have some time spare. Now we'll do it after we release the film. Let's see how it goes. Yes. If it works, I'll come and laugh with you. If it doesn't work, still we'll laugh with you. Yes, we'll 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 have a good time regardless. I am very I'm very certain this film will do very well. You know, this is a topic that is dear to you know a lot of people, and and I'm very glad that you know this is being showcased in a in a major motion picture. So I'm I'm very happy. Uh, we're rooting for you. So all the very best to you and to the vaccine files to everybody involved in making the movie as well. and um yeah wish you nothing but the best and again all the best for the rest of the tour as well thank you very much and just make a promise next time when i come to us come and see the film 100% yeah 100% without without the shadow of a doubt i i apologize is bar nahi ho paya but that is my that is my promise thank you thank you thank you for inviting yeah. me yeah so uh take care vivek uh, we'll chat again soon and guys uh, this episode will be published soon so keep an eye out